Now, Carla, uh, this is, of course, a, 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 an uncomfortable conversation to have for some people, right? Like talking about money. And I, in preparation for this interview, I saw a line that I loved in, I think it's in your profile, on your website, from over-explaining to influencing. <laughs> yes. Now, in my case, it has helped me that we transition to focus on inbound. So through content, I saw a big change in my career when people were coming to us because they found us somewhere. So questions like, could you tell me a little bit about your previous experience? What has a results of other clients? A, I don't know, what, your age, your background, that disappears when people see you as an authority, their focus, their trust is already there and they focus on some other not so obvious questions. Of course, to do it the inbound way, maybe you have to be patient and, and wait a lot. So I was curious if you had other, what was your framework for going from over explaining to influencing? Oh man, we could talk for hours about that topic. So I really struggled early in my corporate career with over explaining. And the, the sad part about that is when we give too much detail, we look, we actually look like we don't know what we're doing versus appearing strategic and confident in what we're sharing. So the idea about going from over explaining to influencing is this when we're influencing, we're seen as strategic. And when we're over explaining, we're seen as very tactical and we bring a higher value when we're seen as strategic. So it's really important to make that transition. The best way to do that is to share your ideas in three sentences or less. And I mean, three very concise, clear sentences. And then you follow it up with a question. You can ask something like, what questions do you have? What else would you like to know about whatever the topic is? So if we were talking about a speaking presentation, I would say something like, what other questions do you have about the content and the value that I'll deliver in this talk? And then be silent and let them ask the question. Uh, you know, I heard a, a, a saying many, many years ago that has stuck with me, probably because it made me catch my breath when I heard it which was my signal that it was something I needed to pay attention to. And it is this, nobody wants or needs to know everything that's going on inside of your head. And we have an overwhelming urge sometimes to share all of it because we think it's going to justify or explain, in this case, our price. And it doesn't. You're a professional speaker. Your speaking fee is $9,000. This is the value you deliver. What other questions do you have for me? One of the biggest surprises for me in my speaking career is how often I say to an event organizer when they say, hey, Carl, what is your speaking fee? And I say, it's $9,000 plus two nights stay at the hotel at the venue. And they say, okay, that sounds great. I, I literally sit there and think, well, what's not okay then? Like, am I leaving money on the table? I don't know, probably because it's a quick yes. And yet we question ourselves on the value or are we charging too much or this or that? You know what? Get out there and charge for the value that you're delivering. The market will tell you whether or not that's a reasonable price. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And it brings to mind so many things, one of which is that there's this great book on pricing that talks about the difference between the typical uh, lowest price strategy, right? Like Walmart and, and, and those kind of businesses. That's one. Then you have premium prices. And, and we know a lot of businesses like that. And then the third is a luxury. And the remarkable thing is that the difference between luxury and premium is not the quality, is the demand. You could have a product that is the same. It has the same features. If just more people want it, that the amount of supply that there is, that's why it's priced higher. So that's a great point that sometimes we think that we have to explain and prove the value. And it's just like, well, if, if a lot of people want you to speak at a, at, at a different events, you only have um, X amount of hours that you can speak. So that that's just a, a point that you can use to to raise the, the prices. Yeah, absolutely. And 
You know, you think about speaking at an event. So I live in Phoenix. I just booked an event in Chicago that I am getting $9,000 uh, for plus two nights stay at a hotel. And it's really three days of work for me, right? Because I'm going to have to fly from Phoenix to get there the day before. My, I never arrive at a place the same day in case there's a problem with the flight. So I'm going to fly in the day before. Sure, I can do a little bit of work on the plane. And then I'm going to be at the event. I'm delivering in the morning. And I'm going to be present all day. I'm going to different speakers, uh, breakouts. I'm going to interact with the audience because I feel like as a speaker, it's my job to help make that event successful. So I'm not going to speak and then run up to my room and y'all are never going to see me again. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at lunch. I'm going to answer questions. I'm available to the participants. And then I fly out the next day. So that's three days of work. I had a, a situation where recently I got asked to come and facilitate a workshop. And I gave my price and they came back and said, you know, we really can't meet that. The most I could give you is $5,000. Sometimes I will take less depending on what's on my schedule, how much I really want to do the event, who that audience is, right? Like we get to decide where we want to be flexible. In this case, I decided it, it wasn't the right fit for me. So I said, thank you very much. You know, if you get the additional funds, please let me know. And I appreciate you thinking of me. And then I turned right around and took a $5,000 <laughs> event from somebody else the following week because it was my ideal audience. And I've spoken to this audience before, and I love this community of women. It's for the uh, women in electronics. I love this community of women, and they're so engaging, and I wanted to do it. So sometimes it doesn't even always necessarily make sense on paper, but if you follow your intuition and you really make those judgment calls when they make sense for you, they make sense for your brand and your your uh, the work that you love doing, you can't go wrong. Yeah, those are great points, especially the one about not leaving it to the end. 